Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled Dust to Dust. So much of the crazy things that people do in this material world are due simply to a wrong understanding of the soul. Because they misunderstand the soul, they identify with the body. They think they are the body, when actually the body is just a vehicle, an instrument, a covering like a suit of clothes. Therefore, Krishna begins his spiritual instructions to Arjuna by explaining the nature of the soul. Natvevaham jatu nasham natvang neme janadipaha Nachaiva nabhavishyama sarvevaya mataparam. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Bhagavad Gita 2.12 This is a very important shloka. The materialistic scientists and philosophers say that after finishing the body, we no longer exist, and everything is finished. Well, that's nothing new. That's also Buddhist philosophy. And in Vedic times, there were atheists like Charvaka Muni. Charvaka Muni said, Bhashmi bhutasya dehasya kuta punar agamano bhavet. Why are you worrying about the next life? As soon as this body is burned into ashes, everything is finished. So there are three ends of the body, to become earth, or to become stool, or to become ashes. For those who are buried, like the Christians and Mohammedans, the body becomes earth. And those who throw the body to be eaten by jackals and crows, like the Jains, the body becomes stool. According to the Vedic tradition, however, the body is burned. But any way we dispose of the body, it eventually becomes dust. Everything material has come up from the earth, and in the end it returns to its source. The Bible says, From dust thou come, to dust thou goest. This beautiful body, very nice body, will become dust. This is the end of the material body. We are taking so much care of this body, but the ultimate end of this body is either stool, earth, or ashes. Dust to dust. The material body exists only for a short time, but the soul is eternal, both in the past and in the future. Therefore, the soul is much more valuable and important than the material body. But foolish persons who are in the bodily concept of life are thinking, after all, this body will be finished someday, so as long as the body is here and our senses are healthy, let us enjoy. Why should there be so many restrictions? No illicit sex, no meat-eating, no intoxication, no gambling. These are all nonsense. Let us enjoy life. This is atheistic, foolish life. They do not know that the body is not all there is to life. But this is the first lesson of spiritual life, of real spiritual knowledge. But the material rascals, they don't understand this. Therefore, Krishna first of all chastised Arjuna, Asochan anvasochastvam pragnyavadangscha bhasase, katasun agatasungscha nanusochanti panditaha. While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Bhagavad Gita 2.11 Krishna says, you don't know the real facts of life, but you are talking like a very learned man. Just try to understand the actual truth. Then he says, Natveva ham jatu nasham. 
Never was there a time when I did not exist. Natang neme janadi baha. Nor you, nor all these kings. So the first thing to understand about spiritual life is that there is no such thing as nasham, or non-existence. We never die. And Krishna will explain later on more clearly how we do not die. Jatu nasham, no death at any time. Krishna's statement is unconditional. It is not that sometimes we die and sometimes we don't, or that our continued existence is conditional on something else. No, jatu nasham, not at any time do we cease to exist. We may question, Krishna, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so you may not die, but we ordinary living entities die. So Krishna says, Natvevaham jatu nasham natvam, neither you nor I ever die. Then we may doubt, well, you are Krishna and Arjuna is your friend, therefore you may live, but the others will die. No, Krishna says, Neme Janadipaha. Also, all these people, all these soldiers and kings who have assembled here, they will not die. There is no end to their existence either. So finally, we may suspect, but all those present before you on the battlefield were liberated by seeing you and hearing you speak Bhagavad Gita. So they may have attained immortality, but we will still die. So Krishna assures us further that na chaiva na bhavishyamaha. It is not true that we shall ever cease to exist in the future. And finally, sarve vayam ata param. Everyone, sarve vayam, forever after, ata param. This means we shall continue to exist as individuals eternally. All of us. Krishna does not say that because I am God and you are my friend, we will exist forever and all others will be finished. No. Krishna specifically states that eternal existence applies to everyone. This is the first item of real spiritual knowledge. Other spiritual traditions say that only the soul who is favored by God will attain immortality, or that the soul will merge into God and lose his identity and individuality, or at the end of life, everything is finished. As we have analyzed above, Krishna specifically denies all these possibilities in his very first teaching to Arjuna. This is confirmed in the Vedas. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bhuhunam yo kaman The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the prime eternal among all eternals. He is the supreme conscious living entity of all conscious living entities, and He alone is maintaining all of them. Kata Upanishad 2.2.13 Nityanam means ever-existing. Nitya means forever, always, eternally. So both Krishna and every one of us are ever existing because we are part and parcel of Krishna. As Krishna separated parts and parcels, if Krishna is ever existing, then we are also ever existing. A particle of gold is also qualitatively identical with the gold in the gold mine. The quantitative values of the gold mine and the gold particle are different. A particle of gold may be worth, say, a penny, but a gold mine contains hundreds of millions of dollars worth of gold. Both of them are gold, but the quantity is different. Krishna is the Supreme Spirit, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is all-pervading, omnipresent. He is so expansive, He is present everywhere. We are also all-pervading, but only within our body. Krishna is all-pervading throughout the whole creation, and we are also all-pervading, but only in this body. The quality is similar, but the scale, the quantity, is vastly different. I know the pains and pleasures of my body. You know the pains and pleasures of yours. So our quality of all-pervasiveness is limited to this body. If I pinch myself, I'll feel it but you won't feel it. Therefore, you and I are not all-pervading outside our present body, but Krishna is all-pervading everywhere. When I feel pain, 
Krishna knows it. Vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani chabutani mangtu vedana kashchana. O Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me no one knows. Bhagavad Gita 7.26 Vedaham Samititani I know everything. That is Krishna. Try to understand the distinction between Krishna and us. 